Hi students, welcome, welcome to the world of zoology, myself Dr. Sai from zoology wala. Today we are going to see different levels of organizations in the history of animal kingdom. You know there are different levels of organizations are there in the history of animal kingdom and as per CBSC textbook uh, you have to begin with the cellular level of organization. But just for your information prior to the cellular level of organization protoplasmic grid of organization is also seen of course not that much important. Let us begin with the cellular level of organization. See the cellular level of organization or cellular grid of organization where only cells are present in the history of animal kingdom. For example, if you observe the peripherans, nothing but sponges. In sponges, only cells are present. I mean to say there is no coordinating cells, something like nerve cells and sensory cells. Sensory cells and nerve cells absent in the phylum periphera. So, number of cells are present and the cells are loosely aggregated to form two layers and we are not going to call them as germ layers, okay. Only cells are present and loose cellular aggregation is observed, sensory cells and nerve cells are absent. This is seen in phylum periphera. See the peripherans and you can see a large opening here, large opening here. What is this large opening? And the large opening is called osculum, O-S-C-U-L-E-M. Osculum is the large opening through which the substances will come out including water. And ostia are the number of openings present on the surface of body. Ostia are nothing but pores, holes. That is the reason why it is called porifera. Pori means a hole, H-O-L-E. Fera means bearing or having, hole bearing animals. That is all about the cellular grid of organization and if you observe the next grid of organization, tissue grid of organization. <coughs> Where do you find this tissue grid of organization? The tissue grid of organization is seen in uh, tenophorans and nidarians and of course in the evolution, nidaria, phylum nidaria and phylum tenophora. These are the two organisms where tissue grid of organization is seen. I mean to say here sensory cells and nerve cells develop it. Nerve cells and sensory cells are developed, so there is a better organization, better coordination between the different types of cells which is not seen in previous uh, phylum in cellular level of organization. So here cells are combined to form tissues, cells combined to form tissues. That is the reason why it is called tissue grid of organization seen in phylum Nidaria and phylum Tinophora. See the Tinophorans, see they are emitting the light, uh, bioluminescence, the property is well marked in Tinophora. You know, some uh, Nidarians also exhibits uh, the bioluminescence. I will explain the bioluminescence in uh, next sessions. And this is the tissue grid of organization. Let us observe the next uh, grid of organization called organ grid of organization. Cells combine to form tissues, tissues combine to form organs. Organ grid of organization is developed than tissue grid of organization and tissue grid of organization is developed than previous one, cellular level of organization. Where this organ and organ grid of organization is seen? Organ grid of organization is seen in platyhelminthes. See this? There is one phylum platyhelminthes. What do you mean by platyhelminths? Platy means flat. Helminths means worms. These are called flatworms. Flatworms, phylum platyhelminthes, flatworms, these are the first triploblastic animals in the history of animal kingdom. These are triploblastic animals and previously if you observe the nidarians and uh, tenophores, see the nidarians and tenophores, these are diploblastic animals, diploblastic condition is seen, two layers are present and uh, first time triploblastic condition is seen in the history of animal kingdom in platyhelminthes. So, triploblastic animals, first triploblastic animals, phylum platyhelminthes where organ grid of organization is seen, tissues combine to form organs. And you know one more thing, organ grid of organization is shifted to organ system grid of organization in platyhelminthes only. 
So organ grid of organization shifted to organ system grid of organization. So organ and organ system grid of organization both are seen for the first time in Platy Hellman. This, this is the fundamental point you have to remember as per CBSE. This is very important in the neat aspect, my dear future medicals. So this is the Platy Hellman, this which shows both organ and organ system grid of organization. And organ system grid of organization is seen. As I said, from Platy Helminthus onwards, the next one is Ast Helminthus, followed by Anilida, Arthropoda, Mollusca, Echinodermida, Hemicardida, Cardids, what not. So, starting from uh, these Platy Helminthus onwards to the last one, higher phylum, phylum Cardida, all organisms will exhibit this organ system grade of organization, which is highly developed. My dear friends, you have to remember one thing. So, if at all only cells are present, how can you consider that animal as a developed animal? Sensitivity, sensitivity is nothing but showing response to the environmental conditions. That is the tremendous property which is seen in animals, you know. Showing response to the environmental conditions, of course, plants also show the response to the environmental conditions. But you know, nodding of head, for example, if teacher asks, are you able to follow the class, then you will say, yes, sir, no, sir. You know, this is response. The response what the human being or animals will exhibit, that is possible because of sensory cells and nerve cells. Human being, uh, a very intelligent animal, which is having the self-consciousness. For all this to happen, you know, nerve cells play a crucial role. Such an important nerve cells and sensory cells are developed in the history of animal kingdom for the first time in uh, diploblastic animals, isn't it? Sensory cells and nerve cells absent in, uh, for reference, they are seen in case of uh, nidarians and tenophores. I mean to say, organization is observed. So, tissues are organized to form organs. Organs organized to form organ system, organ systems, so many organ systems are present in the human being body, isn't it? Digestive system, respiratory system, circulatory system, I mean cardiovascular system, skeletal system, musculatory system, genital system. So many systems are developed because of uh, the coordination, because of integration. So that integration is uh, considered as one of the developed uh, property of higher organisms. So human beings or mammals is to the top in the evolutionary ladder because of having this highly developed organ system grid of organization. These are about the types of organizations, my dear friends. And in the next session, we will meet with uh, different types of uh, circulatory systems. Thank you.